Okay, my name's Mark. I'm going to do a video on the ultimate elk weapon. Um, I've muzzleloader hunted for about, um, bear with me while I'm setting this up, for about 18 years. And um, uh, I've, I've learned a lot about muzzleloader hunting and about guns. I'm kind of a gear junkie. So anyways, the uh, bull behind me is a real nice, perfect five point which is about as nice an animal as you're going to get around Mount St. Helens. There are bigger ones, I'm not saying that, but it's a very nice animal. Anyways, um, I, I looked at a lot of muzzleloaders, looked at other people's, and there were just a lot of things I didn't like about them. The first thing was, was uh, a lot of muzzleloaders, when I got into it, had a plunger back here. Um, I don't want that because when I grab the rifle and I'm still hunting or I'm stalking, that thing is gouging into my hand, and you had to hold the gun like this and just barely put your thumb up. I think it's very poor design, unless you had a thumb hole, but I don't. So uh, what I uh, found was, to me, the very best muzzleloader you can get is a Thompson Center Firehawk or a Thunderhawk, or they had a, um, some other one, I don't remember, but it was kind of a long-range one. Um, what I liked about them is the actions. The actions are very simple. You can take them apart. They're very easy to work on. You can replace all the parts for a few dollars. Um, it's stainless steel. It still corrodes. These things still can corrode when you're out hunting in the rain and the powders on there and the, the priming compound. So uh, all these complicated ones, I think they look cool. But I wouldn't own one. I also would never own one with a plunger. I would only own a muzzle loader that has um, this type of action where you just pull this back. This is as simple as it gets. And uh, uh, it has nice safety. And uh, so anyways, I have a stainless Firehawk. Uh, what else I like about it is the barrel. It's got a good twist for the bullets that I use. And I've shot a lot of elk and deer. Um, and kill a lot of animals, bears. Um, but it has a thing called QLA, which is Quick Load Accurizer, I believe. But what it is is it's counterboard, so you just can sit the bullets just in there, and they're not sitting on top. Um, and you don't have to push them in with a short starter. So I push them down in flush, and then I also replace the, or the, the ramrod with a stiff aluminum one. It's noisy. I don't like that, but... What I do like is this little T-bar on the end that swivels. That way I don't need a short starter or any balls to put over the end or anything. And when you're hunting like I do, there's times you'll sneak up on an elk behind a stump or a fallen log, and you want to keep your profile low. So I may shoot and lay back down on the ground and reload sideways. So I can't uh, be pushing on it uh, unless I have something to push on, and this does. So that's really a good deal. Um, I also one time had a uh, uh, thimble come off because they're just put on with little countersunk screws that are get maybe two or three turns of, of, of thread. And so I went and had these TIG welded. It cost them about $20. It wasn't much. Um, the other thing I've done is I take black tape and I put it around here so that I have tape with me to put over the end, um, which keeps anything out of the muzzle. And around here, it's really wet, and the snow is really wet, and it's slippery at times. And if there's snow, I'll fall one time during the day, and this keeps the snow and the mud and crud out of the barrel. So I have that. The other thing is, is I wrap this a little bit bigger than the clearance between the ramrod and the barrel, and that way it creates more friction your uh, ramrod won't come out. And I've done that before, too. Had the ramrod come out, and then I have to backtrack or not find it. So um, that, that, that's a big deal. All these things I've come up with were from mistakes. So um, the next thing I did was I went and bought stainless screws for the actions. And I did that. I made them uh, a little bit bigger. I think they're quarter inches. And uh, the other ones were smaller. And by taking your gun apart a bunch of times to clean it, the thread started getting loose, and I actually stripped one one time. So I put in bigger screws, just drilled them out, tapped them. Uh, some of the stuff you could have done, 
if you don't have that equipment, you could just go to a machine shop and they do the TIG welding and the, the, the drilling. But anyway, so that's what I have there. That was something uh, that worked out good. And then the other thing is, is uh, a lot of the guns, especially the entry level ones, will have plastic stocks. They're synthetic, just because they're man-made, but they're plastic. And what I had was when I was shooting them off a bench, they would bounce. They would they would make the the, the gun bounce and and uh, so what I did was I had one gun that had a fiberglass Bell and Carlson that was a good deal, but then I also got a wood one. I like the wood one best. It's prettier. Um, I've went and sealed every open surface, not with varnish, but with acroglass, and it makes the um, the uh, checkering very tough. I did the barrel channel, every part that was open, even the back here. Um, the next modification I did was I'm tall. I'm six foot three. I have long arms and wide shoulders. Uh, my length of pull is, is longer. So I went and had a good uh, recoil pad put on. And I would say anyone over about 5'10 might want to consider that. Um, then the, the next thing I did was the sights. Um, didn't really like open sights that much, um, and with an aperture sight, you're getting about 50% longer sighting plane, which should help you be more accurate. And now that I'm 47, open sights are tough for me, so an aperture sight really is the only way I can do anyway. So I bought a, a Thompson Center aperture sight. I went and bought set screws, and these are not gun gun uh, threads. These are standard threads they use on all this. It's not all the oddball gun threads. So I went and bought set screws that were longer and that way I can lock this sight in place. Um, they're kind of, a lot of sights are not that precise and sturdy. This one, because of the screws I replaced, is really sturdy. And then the next thing I did is I bought this little aperture. It's made by Merit. It's a hunting aperture and it works like a camera. It, uh, when I'm in the timber or it's getting towards dark and I hunt late in the year, so it gets dark about 4.30, I can open the aperture up and um, uh, I can see really good. And then if I'm place where it's more open or it's bright sunlight, I can change it. This is a really, just about anyone that has an aperture sight should look at this. I really, really like this. Um, whoever thought of it, I think it's a great idea. And then the last thing I did was I went and bought a fiber optic sight. I never liked them for a long time because I always looked at them uh, through open sights people had. But when I put it together with an aperture sight, um, I just, that bead uh, just glows. I can put it right where I want to shoot and, and hit right there. Um, I'm sure that there's maybe more accurate sights, but, you know, for me, I'm shooting 100 yards. Um, yeah, if uh, I needed to shoot 500 yards with open sights, I might do something different, but I don't. So it works really good. I know people argue about them, say they're not very accurate, but, but I haven't had any problems with it. Um, the only thing that I would really do in addition on this rifle is if I could get a front sight base that had wings on it so that um, I've had before um, one time. Uh, I had my rifle leaning up against the tailgate. It fell over, and I didn't look or didn't notice that the front sight got bent. It would be nice if I had little, like, military wings. So that's the only other thing I'd do. But other than that, this is a great, great uh, rifle. I use uh, um, cast performance bullet products, hardened uh, pistol bullets with a flat point. You can see I have another video um, about that. But um, anyways, good luck and uh, take the time to treat these like, you know, tools that the elk deserves to be shot and killed with, not just shot at. Muzzle loading people wound a lot of animals. They do. I don't like it, but that's what it's, you know, a lot of animals get away from bow hunters too. Um, so we need to just make sure that these things are super dependable. So anyways, uh, good luck on your hunting, and I'll talk to you later, and I'll get you a video of this elk. There, that's a pretty nice five-point for Mount St. Helens. Bye.